Russia, December 1899 Imperial St. Petersburg's rivers and canals freeze over, transforming the capital city into a fairy tale like wonderland. The markets on ice allows ice skaters to partake in commerce and enjoy various attractions. Kind hearted 18 year old Matvey Polyakov is an ice skating courier working for a local patisserie who is renowned for his speed. He is the fastest thanks to his skill with the heirloom silver skates inherited from his father Petter, an optimistic and pious lamplighter. The Tsarist minister Nikolai Vyazemsky's daughter Elisa Vyazemskaya chafes against the expectations, customs, and superstition of the upper class she seeks to study the sciences and chemistry specifically, but is forced to hide her interests from her father, who, like many Russian aristocrats of that time, believes that a woman would be better off without higher education, he believes. It only produces free thinkers and rebels. Her socialite stepmother Severina Jenrikovna, who believes in occultism such as astrology, dislikes her independent nature and suggests to Nikolai that she should be married off. Nears Arkady Trubetskoy, the stern and ambitious captain of the guard, seeks her hand in marriage for the wealth inherited from her late mother. A few days before the dawn of the 20th century, Matvey loses his job due to tardiness, as the street he took was closed for the passage of the aristocratic Vyazemskys. Going home, his father displays a severe and prolonged cough. At Matvey's urging they eventually seek a doctor's opinion. Where? He discovers that his father has developed late-stage consumption. Dr. Grigory Anatolievich tells him that, to his knowledge, the only chance for a cure is at a German clinic in Baden-Baden, which the Polyakovs could not afford. With nothing to lose, Matvey seeks out a gang of pickpockets named the Vice Gang, whom he has encountered on the canals the day he lost his job. Their leader Alex is impressed by Matvey's speed and agility. He is a proponent of Marx's ideas about expropriation, which the other members Muka, Jengis, and Graf support. Matvey trains with the Vice Gang, learning the sleight of hand inherent to pickpocketing in order to pay for his father's treatment. The gang steals into the Vyazemsky mansion, where they challenge Matvey to leave a do graffiti on a window. Matvey climbs onto Elisa's balcony where she confronts him. Matvey spooks her, leaving him burnt by her lamp. In his first heist, Matvey manages to steal two invitations to a ball on ice in the courtyard of the St. Michael's Castle organized by the Imperial Ice Skating Club. After Muka tries to downplay Matvey's initial success, and Matvey receives a makeover, Matvey and Alex enter the ball, Alex teaching him how to blend in with the nobles so as to reap the golden opportunity. Elisa is also there, she is formally acquainted to Count Arkady, who had invited her there. Alex and Matvey steals from the assembled nobility, who are entranced by the Count's display of skating prowess. Elisa and Matvey catch each other and she proposes a deal. Elisa won't reveal Matvey's crimes, but he must assist her in entering the best as have courses as a student, according to the law of the time. This requires the consent of a male companion or her father. As the thieves escape, Alex reminds Matvey of his and Elisa's vast difference in class, telling him to remember where Matvey came from. The next day, Elisa feigns a fever after absconding. She meets Matvey outside the college. Although Dmitri Mendeleev himself enthusiastically endorses Elisa's candidacy at the entrance exam, the scheme fails because the consent must be written, and Matvey cannot write. Elisa fumes at their failure, but Matvey connects with her on the return trip. To her mansion she admits that she has little understanding of the lives of the common men and her wealth of privilege both due to her class, and she openly considers Matvey's invitation of a date. The heist at the ball proved to be lucrative, however, Matvey's father becomes suspicious of him and the amount of money he gives, eventually rejecting it and the possibility of treatment because of the dishonest work his son committed for them. Matvey quarrels with him, he challenges the existence of God, which his father angrily rebuffs him for and leaves home to go live with Alex and the gang at their base, a derelict wooden frigate frozen into the ice in the Gulf of Finland, due to several high-profile losses at the bowl, including the Grand Duke's heirloom pocket watch, the theft of which Nikolai proclaims, 
to be terrorism. The police plot a sting operation on Count Arcady's initiative, who've long investigated the ICE gang. On Christmas night, the Vyazemskis exchange gifts from Severina. Nikolai receives a locomobile, the third such machine in Petersburg, while Elisa receives a cage for her cherished white rabbit who has been troubling her parents. Elisa continues to feign her illness to avoid attending Christmas Mass with her parents. Matevi arrives and takes her, on his promised date along the canals where they eventually meet Alex and his girlfriend Margot, at a circus. By then they realize they are in love with each other, kissing on her balcony. But Elisa reveals that she is to be engaged. The next day, Muka attempts to pickpocket undercover policeman Alexander Ivanovich and his handcuffed the sting operation threatens to ensnare Matevi, Muka, and Duke, who are on the ice. Alex and Arcady independently oversee the ambush of guards from a bridge above the canal Alex tells Genius to go back home before the Count notices their presence. In the subsequent chase Duke is captured, while Matevi and Muka escapes and reconciles. The Count tracks Matevi down and incapacitates him with a hooked staff. But Alex comes to his aid and shoots the Count's right leg with a nagant, hobbling in. Matevi decides to return home, where he finds his father has died. He reminisces on the time his father taught him to ice skate and his advice on Matevi's dishonesty, and leaves an oil lamp at his grave. In the same evening, Elisa and Arcady volunteer for the French magician Fourier's performance at the Fourier ignites a bowl of fuel using candles that Elisa and Arcady carried and sets his hands ablaze, and tells the audience that the flames do not burn him because of the compatible energies of Arcady and Elisa. Elisa considers this performance as a stupid farce and unveils Fourier's cold flame trick to the assembled nobles in French, humiliating her stepmother. Her father barges into her room and catches her reading the copy of Capital that was gifted to her by Alex. Nikolai angrily compares her to the decabrists and orders that her library of books be burned Elisa's governess. The prim Englishwoman Miss Jackson is taken aback by his outburst and resigns. Miss Jackson reveals that Elisa has inspired her to stop living for the sake of others and choose what she truly wants in life, and tells Elisa the most difficult decisions are sometimes those easiest executed. Elisa absconds yet again and finds Dice Gang's hideout with Margot's help. She tells Matevi that the jewelry she has stolen away with could buy train tickets to Paris and the treatment for his father. To this, he remains silent, and Elisa hugs him as a sign of comfort and understanding. Elisa is given Alex's cabin for the night and she asks the accompanying Matevi if he would come with her to Paris, to which he responds with a kiss. They proceed to consummate their love for each other. As the two talk in bed, the ship is surrounded by the Captain Count and his men who start. A fire that engulfs the ship, the ship's location having been tortured out of the captured Duke. Matevi and Elisa leave the rest of the Vice Gang behind to Alex's displeasure. As he intends to use her as a hostage, Jinghis, Margot, and Nuka are captured as they attempt to escape the ship. Alex incapacitates Matevi and executes his plan, demanding assurance of all his comrades' escape including the traitor Duke for Elisa's safety, which Arcady gives his word for. During her descent, Elisa's rope harness burns and snaps she is narrowly caught by Matevi who lowers her down to Arcady. Matevi confronts Alex who defuses Matevi's rage by resigning himself to it. The two cynically observe that the Count's word proves to be in bad faith as the assembled police opens fire on them and recaptures the four escapees. Alex tells him to jump overboard as the fire has weakened the ice sufficiently for a water landing. When Matevi asks of him, he tearfully replies the captain leaves last, or he sinks to the bottom. When Matevi insists on waiting, Alex replies, see you on the other side. As they both run off the bowsprit, Alex shoots into the air to draw attention to him and allows Officer Ivanovich to shoot him, he sinks into the frigid water and drowns. Matevi manages to emerge from the sea and falls into a coma before fishermen take him to Anatolievich's hospital, who immediately attempts to treat him for hypothermia. The memory of his father restores his will to live. Dr. Grigory explains that Mr. Polyakov was brought 
to the clinic before his death and returns the money Matevi handed over for treatment, which Matevi, respecting his father's wishes, returns most of it. As New Year's Day approaches, Elisa dissociates after she learns that her father gave full consent to her marriage with Count Arkady, who tries to win her over. The Vyazemskis attend a costume ball at the Great Gachina Palace to announce Elisa's betrothal. Matevi infiltrates the ball and reveals himself and to train tickets to Elisa, which she joyfully accepts. As Nikolai announces his daughter's betrothal, Arkady attempts to return with her, but he merely finds one of the train tickets Matevi had dropped it due to a butler's intrusion. Matevi and Elisa skate away towards Vitebsky railway station with Arkady pursuing on horseback. At the platform the couple discover the missing ticket Matevi spots the incoming Arkady with the second ticket and asks for Elisa to be kept on the train no matter what before intercepting Arkady on the platform. Matevi prevails in the ensuing struggle and runs back with the ticket, jumping onto the caboose to awaiting Elisa. But Arkady borrows an Nagan from a station officer and shoots Matevi's heart. The Silver Skates catch the bullet and saves Matevi, and the couple make it to Paris. Four years later, Nikolai Vyazemsky visits Dmitry Mendeleev to tell him that he knows of his secret correspondence with his daughter. The jubilant Mendeleev tells him that Elisa has made great strides in the study of chemistry and is set to receive an academic degree within a year which will allow her to work in all prestigious universities in the West. Vyazemsky asks the directorate of the university, where the best is have courses are held, to amend the charter so that women will be able to teach there he realizes this is the only way to have his daughter close again. Subsequently, Elisa lectures a class of women on chemistry with Mendeley Van Nikolai. In attendance, she elaborates the reaction that allows fire to be cold, the touch, the film ends with Elisa, Matevi, and their young son Petya, named after his late paternal grandfather, learning how to ice skate.